The first yoke I ever sold was about a girl in Hayhira, Georgia, who was born with her breast on her back, which was really a tragic story, but she made a wonderful dancing partner, and the Atlanta Constitution bought that for one dollar. <laughs> Well, when I saw I couldn't make a living writing jokes, I started trying to write novels, and mm -hmm. I've now had nine suspense novels published. And my new book, which is about Edgar Casey, yeah. do you know Edgar Casey? Yes. You do? Yeah. Well, this is I, the return of Edgar Casey. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it'll be, we'll launch that as an e-book probably in the next 60 days. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's fast. Uh, yeah. So I've gotten, I, on Facebook, I said that I was looking for questions for yes. Edgar Casey. Yes, I saw that. Well, I got hundreds of, really? from all over the world, Europe, Asia, all over. I mean, and they call on the telephone. It's just been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I would put these questions to Mr. Casey, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it would show up on my computer his answers. So some of them were pretty brilliant. So I didn't really write the book. He wrote the book. Now, how did you, is there, was there a, a program that you used that? I, I had finished my new novel, mm -hmm. uh, The Cordoba Conspiracy, it's called, and, yeah. uh, and it's gone out to readers to get their opinion. I, I don't know what their opinions are yet. And uh, I was sitting at my, my computer and I got to thinking, well, what am I going to do between now and the time that this new book is ready to go to, to print. And while I was sitting there, I've always been an admirer of Edgar Casey. Mm -hmm. And while I was sitting there, I, it was like he was talking to me. No voice, I didn't hear voices. But uh, it's like I had just, I typed what I thought he was saying. And some of the questions were intriguing some of the answers. For example, somebody wanted to know what the top uh, uh, people who had been uh, prophets, who were they? And there were hundreds of them. Well, he started naming prophets. He named the ones that are obvious in the Bible, and then he started naming the ones that I'd never heard of. And I then had to go look up uh, prophets somewhere, and so I googled prophets to see if I could find whether I'd spell them properly. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, he's not too good on his spelling, but he has a great sense of humor. And somebody said, uh, "What is the difference between between soul and spirit?" And he went into that for about two thousand words. And I said, "Mr. Casey, I don't understand this, and I don't think anybody else will. Could you make it simple?" And there was a long, long pause, and then it came out simply. And that's what what will go into the book. It's the most fascinating thing I've ever done. I have never taken on a project more fascinating than this one. And I couldn't sleep at night. I'd get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and come out here and commune with Casey. Interesting. It was, ex oh, it was incredible. <laughs> Of course, now, to show you how crazy my friends are, mm -hmm. when I say I've been talking to Edgar Casey, they say, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so maybe, I, who knows, maybe I've gone over the edge here. And Linda Klein lives over in Wasissa, Florida, the other side of Tallahassee, Florida. And I told her what was happening. I said, and she said, that's channeling. Well, I'd never heard that term before. And she yeah. said, he's, he's talking through you. And I said, well, people are going to think I'm crazy. And she said, well, that's all right. They thought he was crazy. She said, if he could talk to people when he was alive, he talked to dead people. Why can he not talk from, to live people when he's dead? Right. She said, so go with it. So we did. It, I'm telling you, I know it sounds daffy. You know, I know it sounds kind of, odd, but it truly was. He said things, he used words that I've never heard before. Do you know the word lucubration? I do not. L-U-C-U-B-R-A-T-I-O-N, lucubration. I didn't know it either. I'd never heard that word. And it means to work steadily and 
uh, with great effort, at, usually late at night, and that's exactly what we were doing. Oh. I hope I've done something that won't embarrass him. I hope he'll be pleased with it that I won't yeah. have discomfited him in some way. So how long did it take you to write? Oh, it's been weeks and weeks. I don't know how long. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know whether we're through or not. I mean, he hasn't yeah. talked to me for several days, so I assume we're through. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the um, most interesting uh, questions that, because you had fans write to you and call you, what were some of the most interesting questions they gave? The most interesting question. I tell you, everything he said was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think when he talked about whether or not the guy in North Korea was going to be a threat to world peace, and he said no, he wasn't going to be around that long, but that his son was going to take the place of the father, who's the head of North Korea now, and that he would be uh, make friends with his neighbors and would lead North Korea to be a very prosperous nation. Well, that's, that's quite a prediction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't guess we'll be that long finding out. I mean, if the guy lives for another 50 years, we won't find out, but at some point we will find out. And he also uh, made predictions about the economy in America and worldwide. Uh, which were which were which are pretty obvious. I mean, if you keep up with the newspapers, that right. we're you know we're spending too much money, and he said that. Yeah. Uh, he talked about uh, what life is like after you die, and that uh, he said that we don't uh, we don't die. He said that when you die, you just move over to another uh, plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he described it. No, it was beautiful. He said the reason people don't know what happens after they die is because they'd be running around here shooting themselves <laughs> to get out of the mess they're in. It's it, it's it's just fascinating. Yeah. Now he's still. I guess he feels maybe he feels his work is not through yet because he's still speaking well, to I, you to make. I ask him. Why are we doing this? When the body died in January the, on January the 3rd, 1945, um, before it died, he spoke of his body as a second person, before it died, uh, it said that I would be back in 50 years. And that alone should have told you that, uh, I, that the world would not end uh, December the 21st yeah. of 2012. So I said in 50 years, he said he'd be back in the year 2050. Mm -hmm. So that's what got started. And he talked about things as long ago as um, uh, the pyramids. And he talked about the Essenes. Do you know what that is? That was a religious group. Oh. And he said that uh, Christ was one of the Essenes mm -hmm. and that... Uh, that he had, that Christ had been here many times, in many forms, as many prophets. So he was Buddha, and he was Christ, and he was these various people. Well, I'm not very, I mean, I, I'm not, a, I'm not, not religious, but I'm not. I just never have thought about stuff like yeah. that, and I don't know where there's anything to reincarnation, but he makes a good case for it. Yeah. And he did, uh, he, he had studied theology himself. He did? Yeah. Well, he read the Bible once a year for every year of his life. I read in a book about him when I got started on all this. And, uh, and he said that, that, he, that he was a Christian and that he didn't trust his own readings, that he didn't trust what he was telling other people. And that he suggested that they look look for answers for themselves, yeah. and that they uh, investigate everything he said somewhere else. Right. Well, I tried to do that as much as I could, but I don't know where exactly where to go. I tell you, when I 
I first heard about Casey, I was on a trip, I was going to be on a network show in New York, and I was flying to New York from where I lived, which was Thomasville, Georgia. And uh, when I got to Atlanta, I had a layover, and a friend of mine offered to put me up overnight, and she was a, a, a Delta stewardess, and she said she had just read a book that really upset her, and it was Edgar Casey on Atlantis. She said, would you read this book and tell me what you think about it? Well, I took the book, and I read it on the airplane, and then I spent three days in New York staying in my room <laughs> reading that book. It was so fascinating to me. And I thought, well, okay, now this guy believes in reincarnation, and he believes there really was an Atlantis and so forth. I'm going to find out if this man's a kook. Mm. And I went to Selma, where he had been a photographer. I met his, um, his barber. I met the man who lived next door to him and a woman that he'd done uh, readings for. I went to Hopkinsville, where he was born and where he's now buried, uh, to, and we talked to his nephew and we talked to people around town to find out if this man is, was really the man that he, I mean, what, what kind of man is this? Right. Everybody said he's a wonderful person. He's intelligent, he's kind, he's gentle, he's a good Christian man, they all said that. Well, he says that uh, reincarnation was uh, taught by the Christian faith, that, that they believed that it was not uh, something that the average person could believe, so they n knocked it out of the teaching and they quit teaching reincarnation. But he said originally when the Essenes were teaching about Christianity, that uh, they taught about reincarnation. Really? Yeah, that's what he says. Huh. And I started reading the book. You know, he never wrote anything. Mm -hmm. Everybody else wrote about him. Right. And I started reading all that I could find. And some of the stuff I didn't really believe. For example, he said that Atlantis would rise again in 1968. And it didn't happen, according to people. But it yeah. did, he says. He said the reason they're confused about it is because Atlantis was five big islands after the first destruction that broke up the continent, and that they have been slowly rising one at a time, and that one off of Bimini came up and he named the man who worked with uh, uh, a, a, a government agency in America who had investigated, and he named that man, which is in the book, and also uh, where this, this had been first appeared, uh, so he said that people have been confused about it, and he said he didn't want to defend his uh, readings in the past that may look like they may not have come true, mm -hmm. because he said they may have come true, and people just think that they haven't come true. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I mean, really and truly, isn't it? It's just fascinating to me. Yeah. He said earlier that... Um, he had that he he's come back to to tell these prophecies because he wants to let people know that mankind will go on do you think there that people have a fear that mankind won't go on or that well, there will be some end well don't you think they do well there are the the end of the world prophecies no he said that's all wrong yeah he but i don't want to put words in his mouth but i think well, I better not even say that because I'm not sure what he thought, but he was talked about um, not the end of the world kind of mm -hmm. thing, but that people thought that the world was beyond repair, that right. uh, they had become discouraged financially and not just in America, but all over the world. He says we're in for some real hard times financially, that uh, we're headed for a major depression. Yeah. And uh, he wants to reassure people they're going to get through this all right. They're going to make it all right. What about um, environmentally? Because, you know, we've had so He's, many terrible things happen um, with the tornadoes in northern Alabama and across the country, really, and uh, the earthquakes lately. Yes. He said, somebody asked him if California was going to have a major earthquake. Mm hmm and, and, and any time soon is the way the question came in. And he said that there would be plenty of warning ahead of time, that there would be um, uh, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, and he named all the places where we've already had them, but apparently that's not 
a prelude to California being in trouble. And he said before the big shake in, uh, in uh, California, it'll happen in Tokyo and New Zealand and Chile and uh, uh, Alaska, and uh, then it would be in California and then in uh, Wyoming uh, in America. Oh, and Missouri. The return of Edgar Casey is Edgar Casey. I didn't even I didn't rewrite any of it. I took it exactly as it came to me. Uh, he would go to the future. He'd go to the past. He'd go to the present. Um, he would uh, he bounce around all over the place. I put it down exactly as he told it. Mm -hmm. I didn't change it. I didn't try to get a cohesion to it that he didn't have. Now, when we got, I worried about whether or not there would be a cohesion to the to the project. And I got up at two o'clock one morning and read the entire manuscript through, and it held together very well. So I was yeah. pleased to leave it like it is. But I didn't change his stuff. I didn't reword his sentences. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he would say things that were conf confusing to me, and I would ask him to clarify it, and he would do so. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm very excited to read that. Oh, so I'm 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 ex I am I am so excited about that project. Mm -hmm. And I hope that people really like it. Yeah.